Hey, uh, joining us here today, uh, my name is uh, Mayor Dan Rourke of the great city of Lowell, and uh, we're here today to, to celebrate uh, another uh, initiative that uh, Governor Healy has, has pushed forward. Uh, she has been no stranger to the city of Lowell in her short time as governor. We're very thankful to her and her team and, and the secretary as well uh, for being here and, and addressing uh, one of Lowell's and, and the state of Massachusetts' great uh, needs, and that's uh, early childhood intervention and care. Uh, I want to thank you to, to Megan. Uh, she's out there somewhere that gave us this tour. It's wonderful, all the stuff that you've done today. today. Uh, on, be, uh, on behalf of, uh, of CTI and the wonderful work here, uh, that has been going on, and, uh, and for grants like the one we are receiving today that will continue uh, to push forward into this very important I issue. Uh, joining me up here today, just uh, for part of Lowell City Government, I want to uh, welcome uh, Lowell City Councilor Vezna Nood. Vezna, thank you for being here as well. We're going to hear from uh, State Representative Vanna Howard, but also joining us here is uh, Representative Ronnie Elliott from the City of Lowell as well. And uh, obviously our, our city manager, Tom Golden, manager, thank you as well for your uh, support. And, uh, initiatives like this, uh, they, they take partnerships, uh, as we all know. Um, the wonderful work that, that goes in, not just on the city side, but a nonprofit uh, world with, with CTI and, and Karen and Kyle for being here and uh, head, Headstrong did this initiative here, just at the Head Start program. We're very honored and we're very thankful for, uh, for all the funding, the partnerships and the resources that are uh, put in to, uh, to make this work. So uh, without further ado, the person that everybody here has come to see, uh, Governor Maury Healy. Governor? Well, thanks so much, Mayor. Um, they're not here to see me. They're here to, to, uh, to celebrate what, um, what we were just able to witness um, in, a, in our tour through CTI. It's incredible, and what a, what a model. And I think for all of us, on behalf of myself, Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, Secretary Tutwiler, who you'll hear from, um, as well as Paul Belsito, who's, who's chair of our EEC board, and certainly our tremendous colleagues in the legislature, um, we, we're happy to be able to support these programs through the appropriation and, and through the funding and let you do what you were born to do, which is to, to change the lives and impact the lives in such a positive way of young people in our communities. And in doing so, you know, have this really transformational impact on families, on communities, and on our great state. You know, Massachusetts, I'm, I'm proud of this. Um, we were recently rated, voted number one in education, number one in innovation, number one place to have a baby in this country, number one place to raise a family in this country, number one place to live if you're a woman. And, um, and, 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 and you know, there's a reason for that is because what we're talking about today, which is the investments that we make in child care, early education, and education generally. That matters, it translates to actual results and outcomes, and that's why we are at the top in all of those categories. Um, delighted to be here today with Mayor Rourke and City Manager Golden. Uh, this time of year, I always compliment our fantastic town and municipal leaders. Um, start a school, lot going on, so you're launched, uh, and uh, that's, that's just terrific, and we stand with you as an administration. Uh, wonderful to see members of the City Council uh, here as well, and our colleagues in the legislature. You have wonderful, wonderful representatives here in the district, and Reps Howard and Elliott, um, and also we're really lucky to have so many others joining in support statewide, including Leader Alice Pice, who's been such a transformational leader on, on uh, education. And Representative and Chair Denise Garlick, uh, who is with us here as well. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I, mentioned, um, I mentioned our state team, and, and um, uh, we really thank the big guy, Pat Totweiler, who's done a great job uh, in the last, whatever, what are we on, 20 months? Feels like a little well, longer, it's but it's been uh, it's been fast and furious. I'm really proud of the record, the work of uh, Department of Ed, the work of, of EEC in particular. I want to thank Secretary Tutwiler and his team for their great great leadership. I also want to thank our outstanding providers because at the end of the day, this is where the rubber meets the road. It's with all of you out there, whether you're driving buses or figuring out operations, or we toured the, the lunchroom, uh, making sure that kids are well fed and nourished. And thanks to our legislature and a commitment that I made, free school breakfast and lunch for every child in Massachusetts. <laughs> or, you know, 
or our wonderful educators in the classroom, um, our uh, inclusion coaches, and, and, and so many more. Um, this is what makes everything work. It is truly that teamwork, and that is what CTI is all about. So, you know, what we're announcing today is the fact that during the pandemic, the federal government came forward with a bunch of money, right? That was important to keep centers like this open, to be able to pay staff and serve young people. Now, of course, the pandemic, thankfully, has gone away. But with that, away went the federal funding. Massachusetts did something unique. Massachusetts is the only state in the country, and as governor, I am very proud of this, to make the decision to continue to fund child care and early education at those levels. And I want to thank, <clears throat> I want to thank the legislative leadership for making sure that we had the funding to be able to keep those subsidies going for the child care sector, uh, specifically through our C3 Commonwealth Cares for Children program. And our first budget, we used some state funds to sustain that support to the tune of over 475 million statewide, which preserved 20,000 child care seats. You think about the ripple effect of, of that. In this year's budget, we made that permanent. We put it on a permanent footing so that providers can actually plan ahead for the years to come and invest in their people in programs with the certainty knowing that this foundational infrastructure is gonna be in place. You know, Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo um, speaks about this in, in ways that I think are really accurate. Child care is foundational to our economic uh, growth and development, right? It's so, so important. And Massachusetts, we have really leaned in here to say, yes, we believe that, we're making good on that, and today is just an example of this. Funding, of course, is important. It's just one piece. Earlier this year, I signed an executive order that directed all of our state agencies to help make childcare more affordable, more accessible. And this is a, a, an example of some of the progress that we're making. So this time, for the first time, five out of our new 25 registered uh, apprenticeship programs that are state funded are for child care educators, okay? Because we know that is a field, that is a career that we need and also so many young people wish to pursue. So we're setting them up early with that, with that uh, uh, opportunity through our registered apprenticeship programs. Hundreds of people are now earning child development certificates and lead teacher certificates through partnerships with providers and funding through our Executive Office of Labor and Workforce Development. So it's Department of Ed, but it's also Department of Labor and Workforce Development working together to support this whole uh, wonderful child care workforce. I also want to thank the legislature because, um, you know, we made community college free. That's a big deal because so many of these providers normally have had to pay to help their staff get additional training, credentialing, and the like. And so with that simple act, we were able to, to take to lessen some of the burden for great operators and providers like, like CTI. And I, I remind everyone everywhere I go that community college is free. Um, so anyone you know who's looking to advance their careers, uh, please go take advantage of, uh, of that. Um, so look, uh, great day. Um, our continued work um, in this area uh, is important. That's why our Early Education and Child Care Task Force is right now engaging with industry, with business leaders, uh, with organized labor and other experts to continue to craft recommendations in this space. Secretary Tutwiler held listening sessions all summer on this topic. So we're just gonna continue to lean into this and make sure that Massachusetts is bringing its best every single day for our young people and for our families. And with that, I turned it over to our friend, uh, Secretary Pat Tutwiler. Well, good morning. How's everyone doing? Great. I'm doing awesome as well. Uh, and let me tell you, um, this place is incredible, CTI. I have to tell you, that the only challenge with coming here, and my team knows this, is that I don't want to leave. Uh, there, there's such incredible richness with, with what's happening in the classrooms that we toured and we saw. Uh, the, the, the food services piece is, is all set up and ready to go. The transportation piece is ready to go. It's just a real honor to be here. And equally, it's an honor to serve in an administration under Governor Healy's uh, leadership that embraces a fundamental truth. And that fundamental truth 
is that education begins at birth, not at kindergarten. Uh, and today we got to see uh, CTI's uh, Head Start preschool classrooms and wraparound supports for children and families. This is what it's all about. We saw firsthand the dedicated educators who are so incredibly passionate about inspiring their students and giving them the start that they deserve. And we saw kids participating in play-based, active learning environments, which are key to social emotional growth and development. Uh, early education is foundational to closing the opportunity gap in Massachusetts, bringing economic equity and mobility to families as well as uh, opportunities for their children. Uh, access to affordable childcare is an engine, is the engine of the state's economy, enabling families of all income levels to participate in our workforce or pursue higher education, which they can do so free in the community college space at this moment, thanks to our, uh, the partnership with the legislature. Uh, in the past year and a half, 20 months, uh, as the governor uh, illustrated, the administration, with the support of our partners in the legislature, have made significant progress in promoting affordable and accessible early education and care, moving towards a more modern, equitable, and responsive system. Just last week, I had a wonderful opportunity to be at East Boston Social Centers uh, celebrating the eight, eight and a half million dollars in capital funding to support renovation projects to expand capacity and improve indoor and outdoor quality and accessibility of learning environments for children. Uh, in addition to these facilities enhancements, we've made a concerted effort to make things easier for families. We updated our child care financial assistance regulations and policies to simplify the application process, reduce paperwork, uh, and better support homeless families, families with uh, disabilities, and families facing domestic violence. Uh, we, re in we increased reimbursements for child care providers who accept child care financial assistance, becoming a part of a small uh, group of states, I believe there's only six, and the nation approved by the federal government to use the uh, cost of care when setting rates so that they better reflect the true cost of providing high quality care as opposed to uh, how much families can pay. Uh, as the governor mentioned, we just finished 14 listening sessions across the state and I can tell you uh, with deep confidence that in every one of them, providers told us about how vital the C3 uh, grants are to their program. As the governor noted, this program has been a game changer for our most important levers for transformation. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Early Education and Care uh, Commissioner, Amy Kershaw, uh, who could not join us this morning, uh, the Chair of the Board of Early Education and Care, Paul Belsito, uh, who I'm honored to work with, uh, and my legislative colleagues uh, who are here as well, and all of our partners who've been championing this important program and this important work. We know there's important work to be done, but I'm proud of the progress that we've made thus far, uh, and nothing short of what our children, families, and educators, and all of our communities deserve. And with that, I'll now turn it over to uh, City Manager Golden. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary, but you'd uh, made a comment earlier today about 20 months 20 years, you think? It feels like 20 years. I mean, working hard, uh, making things happen, but we're always excited to see the governor here. Governor, thank you so much. Uh, your administration has truly capped um, education as, uh, as, as uh, the beacon for this uh, Commonwealth. And uh, with your leadership and with the Secretary's leadership and his team, uh, it's been fabulous. Uh, thank you so much for that. And it, uh, I'd like to also say there, there are two folks, uh, well, many folks here from the legislature, uh, former colleagues of mine, and I have to say, Madam Chair, you've done a fabulous job. Uh, Madam Leader, uh, I, I've sat next to you so many times during the uh, educational discussions and debates of years ago, and uh, the two of you are those true leaders that have shaped what is happening here uh, in this Commonwealth, and I, I want to say thank you very much to both of you. And of course, to our incredible delegation here in the city of Lowell, uh, continuing to make it happen. Partnerships is a true word. Hand in glove, continuing to move, continuing to move this city forward. 
If people did not know this, the city of Lowell is an educational city. It's an educational city right here at Community Teamwork, going into our, our pre-K kindergarten with Liam Skinner, who our superintendent is here today, that has done a fabulous job in the last year. <clears throat> From K to 12, we have Middlesex Community College, and once again, thank you to the governor, and thank you to the legislature for making that free for everybody, to an outstanding university, U University of Massachusetts at Lowell. I'd like to say in the last, in the, in the next 14.5 miles in this city, you have the ability to go from pre-K all the way to a doctorate degree in 14.5 miles. And you can actually walk to all of these locations. And it's because of this governor, the uh, secretary, the city council, as well as this delegation. The educational city is Lowell, Massachusetts, and we want to welcome all of you that haven't been here before. And thank you, community teamwork, for making it happen. I have the opportunity to now introduce someone that uh, near and dear to my heart, somebody that has given back to this community time in and time out. She is somebody that is a true leader, somebody that when there was a problem, when there was an issue, whether I was in the legislature or as city manager, this person I would call on. And you know, this person would consistently give sage advice, somebody that has seen it, somebody that knows it, somebody knows the hard decisions that need to be made, and somebody that I call a true friend. Not just a true friend to me, but a true friend to her organization, a true friend to the greater Lowell area. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to the retiring CEO, who is a wonderful, wonderful friend, Karen Frederick. And he's going to make me cry, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, Tom, and welcome Governor Healy and Secretary Tutwiler and all of our guests today. It's a fabulous day to be in early education. Um, we are so pleased to have you here at one of our facilities. I'd like to introduce, uh, again, Megan Sembor and her team of Melanie Bixby and Shauna Duran, who run this fabulous division of early education and care. They lead over 300 staff um, in 11 locations, so it's quite an operation. I'd also like to introduce you to my successor, Kyle Howell, who is the next CEO at Community Teamwork. <laughs> Community Teamwork is really fortunate to have such a talented, committed CEO coming in, so congratulations, Carl. Um, I also know that a talented and committed board is behind every good CEO. So I'd like to introduce my board members who are here today. Our President, Sheila Oach. Our Assistant Treasurer, Bernadette Wheeler. Bernadette. And from our Finance and Executive Committee, Murray Sweeney. And Rita O'Brien-D. Two women who really need no introduction in this area. Um, and also, Zia Mara Tiburcio, who is our parent representative from the Policy Council to the Board of Directors. <laughs> In this building, we provide early education and care for many children from infants right through sometimes school age. We've had school age programs here. As you know, we're funded through federal government, the Administration for Children and Families, Head Start, Early Head Start, and with our great partners in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts at the Department of Early Education and Care. Thank you so much for all of your support. Um, we also depend on foundations, the city of Lowell, thank you all of our partners, and I can't say enough about the legislature. I worked with the legislature for 46 years, and this is a stellar crew who really have listened and heard, and I think the listening sessions were awesome for providers to, and for the community to talk about the importance of early education and care. And our local community foundations, thank you Jay Linehan for supporting all of our work here. Um, community teamwork, just for your information, also provides housing development, subsidies for housing, services for families, individuals, youth experiencing homelessness, and a variety of federal programs like WIC, uh, fuel assistance, weatherization, and many economic tools to help people move out of poverty and to move forward in their lives. 
We provide uh, programming to over 56,000 people in over 70 communities every year. Coincidentally, exactly 46 years ago today, I was hired to be the daycare coordinator for community teamwork. <laughs> with 60 children, 60 children in child care and about 100 children in Head Start. Our advocacy work to increase the quality, raise salaries for staff, and provide affordable programs for all parents begin then. Over the past five decades, community teamwork has participated in countless efforts to stabilize and grow high quality, affordable early education and care with comprehensive services. Today, we know the impact of high quality programs on children's ability to succeed in school and the impact that childcare has on a family's future. We all heard COVID-19 laid bare the issues in childcare. We know how much it meant to children, their families and employers to have us open and operating during the pandemic. All right. So, the C3 funding, critically important to programs like ours. As you came in the door, you saw the Rita O'Brien D. Center for Behavioral Health and Development, named after our own Rita O'Brien D. A board member who has over 56 years of consecutive service with community teamwork, from her days as a teacher, policy council, board member, um, and teacher of other teachers. The C3 grants are helping us to bring this important programming to life. Another area where C3 grants, as you heard, is critical to compensate our teachers and all of our staff. When I started, the US Department of Labor classified daycare teachers and parking lot attendants in the same occupational category. Just think about it. The work is hard. It requires education, commitment, and training. We're working to reach parity with public school educators, and we are, while we still have a way to go, we are closer than we have ever been. We need to continue the moment, momentum and value the work, experience, and expertise of our staff. As enrollment in early childhood uh, college level programs has declined, we are so fortunate to hear all from the apprenticeship to the free community college, all that will make a difference. We have tuition reimbursement here at Community Teamwork and it has made such a big difference for our staff to be able to access higher education. In this, that's not where I'm going. <laughs> um, I know, okay, where's my last page? We thank you, Governor Healy, for your leadership in all of this and for codifying the C3 grants. They really are essential to stabilizing and moving this field forward. And for our delegation, it's so wonderful to work with all of you. Vina, I know your lived experience has made you the perfect advocate for all of the work we do and certainly for early education and care. And we're very grateful to you, to Representative um, Elliott, and to all of the folks we work with day in and day out to make this field better. As I leave after all these years working in the field, I am more optimistic about early education and care than I have ever been. Thank you for letting me be in peace. We know it will take all of us to continue to work together on the funding, all of us, from the legislature to the city, to the state, to the federal government. We thank you all for participating in the forward progress of this field. It is critical and important for the future of the Commonwealth. So thank you. And it is my pleasure to introduce next our board member, Ziomara Tubusio. She's a parent and also a participant in our teacher training program. So welcome, Ziomara. Good morning. Good morning. Bear with me, I want to cry already. <laughs> it's not easy a story. Um, I wanted to speak to you today to highlight how um, the comprehensive services of community teamwork of early program has supported me and my family. Sorry, told you, it's not easy. I am a proud single mom of three kids. I have a seven-year-old, 
I have a three-year-old and a two-year-old. Um, I was so happy to receive a facility in September 2023 so that I can go to work and sustain my family as a single mother. At the time, I was homeless too, and my children and I were couch surfing at homes, friends, family, whatever we can find. My seven-year-old is autistic, so it was hard to stay in one place. I was kicked out, didn't have a place to go. My last option was to stay in a car. <laughs> Sorry, I hate going back. I hate it. Um, the needs of my children also got me uh, to be too much for the people and didn't want me to stay, didn't want to help. So I was only working 12 hours a week when I first started my job. My family service worker connected me with the secure job program to find a better job to su support my family and improving my stabilizing for my employment. She supported me navigating through the different resources for housing. I was able to connect me with the home base program. And I was finally able to find my research, was excited to find my place, my home. But unfortunately, I fell a victim of a scam and I ended up losing $5,000 deposit money that I have saved so far. In December 2023, my youngest child developed a health issue and needed to be hospitalized in Boston Children. Lowell General Hospital tried to get us into a shelter, but we were denied due to my uh, son tested positive for COVID. Because of the special needs of my children, community team work was able to provide us with emergency, emergency shelter during the coldest time of the year. My family's work service worker collaborated with the community, teamwork family, child care, housing department, resource centers, and the clinical department to get mental health support for myself and my children. It got me into a shelter place. Thank you. I soon received the call I got placed in Methuen. Without hesitation, I moved. Soon after we were located, we were moved transferred to Lowell because my daughter goes to Lowell School. Both of my family service and my child care provider have supported me with resources for food, clothing, diapers, whatever I needed. Today I'm still in the shelter, but I have been working very hard to achieve my goals one by one. I now receive Taft benefits to supplement my part-time job and I have been working with the housing worker to save some down payments to get an apartment. That's my next goal, hopefully soon. I have also started the early learning teacher training program to work towards a career in child education. And because I feel so strongly about my benefits of the early learning program, I am strengthening my advocacy skills on the security team of the program's parent policy councils, and I am representative of the community team board of directors. Thank you so much. My children have also made a lot of progress. My two-year-old is learning colors, numbers. He's singing lots of songs, which that makes me happy. <laughs> My family child care provider noticed that he has been struggling also with some behaviors issues in certain areas and has supported me strongly to get him evaluated for possibly autism. My three-year-old has strong, oh, and sassy, just like mommy. <laughs> and she likes talking just like mommy, everybody knows it. <laughs> she's now potty trained and she's so smart, she's learning very well. And because of all this, I'm very happy that I have a community team work to work with me. My seven year old has started a bit of having some of, uh, consistently in housing. I can speak highly enough about the benefits of the comprehensive services provided for, to the family of the early program. And it is my wish that families could benefit from the type of support I have received. So thank you all, because it's like everybody here says, doesn't start from one little thing. We start from the bottom, but we can race to the top. Mm -hmm. 
with the help of community teamwork. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now the governor. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much, Samara, uh, for sharing your story. And um, really, um, uh, that's what this is all about. And you know, I, my mom raised the five of us as a single mom for a good amount of time, and I admire so much your fortitude, your resilience, and what you've already taught your kids uh, about life and how to navigate. So uh, way to go, and we wish you the best, too, in, in your developing career. And, early education and child care. That's awesome. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, again, I just want to thank everybody for uh, the support of this. I really want to uh, thank our providers out there who are doing this work every single day. Know that we've got your back. I want to thank our colleagues in the legislature, Leader Peich, uh, Chair Garlic, and of course your wonderful representatives, Howard and Elliot, for their continued work and support for all things education, investment in families, investment in young people. With that, we're happy to take questions on topic. That's a good question. <laughs> a lot, a lot. As the governor said, um, Massachusetts is the only state in the country that is providing pandemic uh, era funding, uh, and we know that it has uh, created 20,000 new spots. How many, exactly how many students uh, will be impacted? We'll, we'll get you an answer to that. Yeah. But you expect the impact to be broad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because this just builds on what otherwise exist, existed. So tens and tens of thousands of, of, of children, which also means, importantly, tens and tens of thousands of families. And if you make it easier for a young person to have a seat in a child care that, uh, place, that means that, you know, uh, a parent's going to be able to go to work uh, or look after other kids. You know, it really has a huge, huge uh, ripple effect, which is why it is so foundational to our economic development and growth and opportunity for all here in the state. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. And just a special uh, acknowledgement and uh, round of applause for our good friend, Karen Frederick, who has been here, as we've heard, uh, for a little bit of time, uh, providing so much support, so many services to so many across this great state. So we wish you the very best. We welcome Carl, but we wish you the very best, Karen. Thank you. Thank you.